Today we catch up with the owner of Longreach 58 Hull No. 2, Russ Stevens, who has cruised the South Pacific and circumnavigated Australia previously on a 50-foot sailing catamaran. In this detailed interview, Russ guides us through this all-new optional layout and configuration as we had an insight into the preferences that help shape this liveaboard Longreach. Russ, thanks for joining us. Pleasure. Uh, have an explore and a discover of your new Longreach 58. I think um, we'll go through the boat in a little bit of detail shortly, but before we do that, I guess I just wanted to share a little bit of your background because, I mean, you've been cruising for a while now and have done a few miles, right? Yeah, that's right. It was about four odd years ago we decided to call in and take a charter of a catamaran out around the islands. My wife was not very keen on the idea and, and kept insisting that we're not buying a boat, we're not buying a boat, we're not buying a boat. Anyway, some months later, we'd, we'd sold up everything. We bought a, a sailing catamaran. We cruised, we knew, we knew nothing about sailing, so we hired a, a skipper for a few weeks, cruised up and down the East Coast for a while. Joining the rally gave us confidence to um, venture offshore, uh, which we did. And we went to New Caledonia for about three months. And then we went to Vanuatu for about another three months. We were having such a great time. We thought, well, why go home? All, all the other yachts were going back to Australia. And we thought, well, why go home? Let's go to New Zealand. So we went down to New Zealand, COVID came. Um, disrupted our plans somewhat. We we were going to go to Tonga and then Fiji and then up into Indo and the Philippines and what have you. But anyway, COVID impacted us some somewhat, but not greatly. So we hung around there for about six or nine months and then Fiji opened up. So we cruised up to Fiji for three or four months and then the cyclone season was coming so, and nothing was open in the world. Mm. We thought, well, let's go home. So we went back to Australia and we'd, we'd hatched a plan to uh, circumnavigate Australia clockwise, which in the last 18 months we've just completed and was an incredible trip, yeah. Our main aim of our circumnavigating, or one of the main ones, was to get to Western Australia and cruise through the Kimberleys. And uh, at the time we were thinking of going, if we stopped in Victoria or anywhere, Western Australia wouldn't let us in. So we had a very big sail from Eden to Port Lincoln. So getting a weather uh, window to make that far was rare. And some people have told us we had a one in a thousand year pieces of luck. <laughs> well, we think it was great weather outing, but anyway. Yeah. And uh, I, I saw some of your videos up around the Kimberleys and it just looked spectacular. Oh, gosh. Uh, anybody who's got a boat able to do those trips and the time, you know, they really should try and experience that. It's yeah, it's wild, it's remote, it's untamed, it's dangerous, but with careful planning, which, you know, we're all about planning and safety and all that sort of stuff. We don't want to get into any sort of dramas. I know lots of YouTube channels thrive on some sort of drama. We we thrive on no drama. Um, so, um, yeah, yeah, it's incredible, an incredible country, the whole way, incredible. So you've, you've done it. Obviously, you've completed that circumnavigation now. You've got all the way around. You've done some of the South Pacific on a on a 50-foot sailing catamaran. So why now are you, with that experience, looking at a looking at a power catamaran like a long range? You know, the main thing for us is that we want to do it together. And lots of couples we see sailing, they either get crew on board to help them and the wives fly over to the other country wherever. Not many couples take on the sailing as a couple. They, and, you know, we like our own space and our, we just like to experience the whole thing together all the time. So 
to be able to do that, and you know, Margie's a lot more nervous about crossing oceans and being out in the ocean in the middle of the night, uh, you know, as most women are. So to be able to accomplish that, we had to have a very safe platform that Margie felt safe with. And, you know, we always picked weather routes that were very benign. So we did not want to be, you know, out in 30 knots or 40 knots or, you know, big waves. So if there was a chance that that was going to happen, we just wouldn't go. Yeah. So we found that most of our crossings, the weather was quite benign and we'd have light, you know, 15 to 20 knot maximum. Two metre seas, my Margie had a limit on that. And with any more than that, we're not going. Um, so we'd just sit and wait. And then a lot of times we'd sail, which was completely unbeatable when it was nice, or we'd motor sail because there was no breeze. As you know, most of the way across the Great Australian Bight, it didn't get more than 10 knots. So the time we got to Fremantle on that trip, we added up our fuel and our rigging cost. Um, we had a, you know, something in the sail go wrong, some pulleys break, some lines break, you know, a block broke and get the uh, mask, a rigging check done. The time we added that cost up to our fuel cost, you know, it's, it's significant money all the time. And a, a big mast in the air, lots of fabric up, is is stress in anyone's book in the middle of the night when squalls are around. And so we want we thought, well, let's just find something that's long range, still a catamaran because we absolutely love the catamaran, but a power catamaran. We get rid of the sail, and and you know it, it'll be so much nicer and less stressful and we can continue what we're doing for years to come mm. that was the number one problem trying to find something with long range capability that we looked for quite a long time and we, I, I guess our first thing we were looking at was um trawlers you know like mm. expedition trawlers yeah and none of those companies that build those even consider fuel economy or solar or any sort of energy assistance at all. I think they must own petrol stations or something because they, they just put huge big motors in and, um, you know, to get the range, you just double your fuel tank, I guess. And then the other uh, problem we felt with them is, you know, they didn't have the size that a catamaran has and they're just not stable, so then you've got to go to a stabilisation thing, which is more energy to run those. So we just couldn't get away from a catamaran. And, um, yeah, and then one day we stumbled across the long road, so we really started to investigate. Yeah, and that's interesting because uh, there, there is a... With the people that have uh, purchased the, the long reach to date, a good number of them are actually coming out of sailing cap experiences uh, and pretty considerable miles they've done too you know peter faulkner we you obviously know peter well and uh and others who have uh, you know cruised around the world or halfway around the world and so i think that's where long reach is sort of uh, finding its home is between people who have got this experience of wanting to go cruising love the, the catamaran uh, comfort and getting that efficiency balance to get the range and yeah it's it's a it's a really interesting um group of people that we're working with and uh, really excited to work with you, Russ, on this project. So I'm really keen to explore some of the ideas on your boat and I've got a, a fly through render here. Should we have a look through it? Yeah, sure. So on the on the back of the boat here, it's obviously quite different to the other layouts that we've had to date with quite a large enclosure on the back of the cockpit here with almost an alfresco galley. Do you want to talk us through that? Yeah, so our lifestyle and our overall theme always is for relaxed and comfortable living. So we're not sort of formal about anything at all in our lives. So if you want to have 
dinner on the back step of the boat, you have it on the back step of the boat. So the idea of the enclosed cockpit, and we found this with our last boat, but once we enclosed it in with clears, it doubled the space of our living area. And it just made it, you know, quite often out on the ocean, on, on anchorages, you know, there's a lazy little cool breeze or there's bugs or, you know, there's misty showers. Um, and having the, being able to just close it up at the push of a button was very appealing to us. We loved our clears, but they're a bit more of a kerfuffle. They're, they haven't quite got the lifespan and, well, you've got to be quite careful with them. So this time we designed those either side on the starboard and port. There'll be a large electric window there that'll vertically slide down into a groove at the rear of the lounge and at the rear of the barbecue cabinet. And then we'll have entry doors on either side that will swing back and we'll quite possibly have sliding doors along the back of the lifting platform. Right, where the dinghy and tender will be stowed. Yeah. Yeah, which I think we can show here again. So this this will be a hydraulic platform. So yeah, that opens up through here if, if need be. That's right. So, yeah. yes, uh, to tie the tender on or to load the tender with diving gear or, you know, groceries or whatever we want to do, we can just have that, or oh, just on a beautiful day, we can have that completely opened up. We can access the dinghy easily or if we're underway, we can have it closed for security and for, you know, you open up the whole boat in the, between the saloon and the rear cockpit like that. Um, it, when you're underway for days at sea, you know, it's really nice to be able to walk around, wander around, lay here, sit there, move there. You know, this, having space is a real luxury to Margie and I. So our uncluttered, open, simple uh, layout is what we were after. That table that's shown there in front of the lounge, we're not going to have that anymore. We're just going to have a, like a simple little coffee table or something like that. So that's just a, a lounging area where we can watch TV or, or just sit and relax and read or whatever. The and then in the cockpit, you have a table there, obviously, as well for dining then. Yes, that table now will be just a fixed, huge, big dining table. So we can use that, you know, if we've got 10, 12 people on board, we can all sit around there and have a meal in plenty of space. We can electrically open the windows on either side. We can open up the back if it's beautiful. Or, you know, if there's lots of mosquitoes and bugs around, we can um, pull a screen down. We can leave so you really extended the, the interior of the boat right to the, the extremities there along the cockpit. Yes, which my building experiences and all our houses and certainly the way it is in Australia, particularly at the moment, is the indoor-outdoor living. We want that open feel that that's got. I mean, you can barely even tell that's a boat. I've had plenty of people comment telling me it's it's an apartment like none other, <laughs> which, you know, it, it is our house. So um, we are living on board. So why not have what you want if you can get someone to build it for you? Well, I think that's why catamarans have really come into their own is they, they do offer a lot of similarities to apartment living you know, albeit a, a, a smaller apartment than some people live in, but it gives you a lot of comfort and, um, and this has certainly got everything. And I guess when you've got 58 feet to play with, that certainly helps too. So you can put a lot of a lot of space in there. So, so yeah, you've got your sort of coffee dining area and then up forward, we, well, we've got the internal staircase here now alongside the, um, the refrigeration that's built in. But up forward, you've got the galley configuration at the bow of the boat rather in the centre, which is, again, quite unique. What inspired that configuration? It's got a big galley too. Yes, well, again, our lifestyle is all about food. 
<laughs> healthy, healthy food. My wife, Margie, is the healthiest person I know and she loves to cook. Another part of our life in our relaxed type of living is that, you know, Margie's domain is that kitchen. So we have the latest, greatest uh, combi steam oven in there, induction cooktops, and then we wanted that large servery because what we found in most of our houses that we've had is that the kitchen is the centre point of our home. Uh, when friends come over or if we're cooking tea, you know, Margie wants to be part of what's going on in the whole area, in this case the boat. So that large servery, you can see how much preparation area there is on that. And my job, I sit on one of those chairs at the servery bar and I chop and cut and do as I'm told. Or, you know, or we just chat about life or families or, you know, day-to-day -day events or where we're going to go. Or, you know, I can just see we'll pull books out and maps out and we'll look at things and, um, you know, we'll just be together and... And enjoy that space. It's 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 completely beautiful. Corian mm. bench tops and mm. you know a large sink. We've got a couple of pull out pantries. We've got a large Libya fridge freezer, which has the latest gas extraction to keep fresh fruit and veggies for longer. We've got a huge freezer space. You know, one thing when you're cruising, it's keeping fresh fruit and veggies and food having enough food on board our previous boat you know you're crawling around on the floor or you're diving down into the holes and or you know you got it stacked on somebody's spare bed you know you got enough beds to sleep 27 people but you know nowhere to put your clothes or food stuff like that so in the long reach you know we've focused on how our life actually is and what we really need, not on those few times that you got 25 people on your boat mm -hmm. and you're all sipping beers and champagnes up all over it, you know. So it's it's all about us and our life and what we really need. So I think you touched on an important point there too, because these are not really day boats. There, uh, you know, there's lots of nice motorboats out there that are great for weekendering and, uh, and and short trips but this is really configured for liverboard cruising isn't it absolutely this is 100 percent a major cruising boat where it can it can go anywhere in the world it's got the range to cross the biggest ocean easily it's got the size and the and the comforts everything in this boat is electric We've gone away from gas cooking, you know, as good as it is, but there's a problem with filling gas up in different countries around the world. And, you know, there is a danger with gas as well. And we just love solar. Being able to roll over in bed and just turn the air conditioning on whenever you want for however long you want, make water whenever you want, fill your dive tanks up whenever you want. It's a huge luxury. And I, I'm really excited these days for the innovation that's come from solar and alternative energies. It's just completely brilliant. And, you know, the, I think the logo or the, the catchphrase for Longreach, go further, stay longer, and don't have to turn a 20 kilowatt generator on, is just brilliant. It's just brilliant. Well, you can see there just from that render the uh, the degree of solar you've got there on quite a large roof. We'll come back to the cockpit uh, or the flybridge, sorry, a little later. But what sort of solar capacity are we looking at now on your boat, Russ? Well, we're looking just over four kilowatts coupled up with big bank of lithium batteries and 12 kilowatts of inverted power. I mean, we've really got some serious power storage there and some serious serious power use. The engines have large 24 volt alternators on them. So when you are motoring, you're not only getting four kilowatts of solar, but you're getting 300 amps of 24 volts put into the batteries if you need. We've also elected to go with a Whisper Power 24 volt DC generator because they're about 90% efficiency from Instead of making 240, run it into a battery charger, which, and then converting it back to 24 volts again. 
So, yeah, we've gone for the most efficient, quietest, fuel economical products we can find in the market to run this whole boat. So, uh, yeah, we're very excited about it. Yeah, excellent. So let's let's dive inside a little further. So down here on the starboard side, you've got a, uh, a utility room, you've got a more of a storage utility room and uh, the washer dryer area. Yeah. So again, you know, our experiences of uh, the previous boat for food, linen storage, and freezer space, we just didn't want to be digging around in the holes anymore. We wanted everything um, where we could, you know, re- you could see how much food and storage we can get in there so we've now also at the end of that pantry utility room we have a full-size freezer i think it's 500 cubic centimeters as an additional freezer and then we've got our laundry and up above that now we have uh, shelving going in underneath our lounge that's up in the saloon so you know, traditionally the lounges, you lift the cushions up from the top and you lift up a hatch and you've got storage under there. I've been able to work out a system where uh, we can access all that lounge storage from down in that in that uh, utility room, which is, you know, for large items like blankets and pillows or, you know, jacket, whatever we can put up in there. That was a very big request of ours to have a room like that. Yeah, excellent. And then forward of that, you've got the the regular fore and aft guest cabin with an ensuite forward yep. of that again. Yeah. Yeah. So we've we elected to put the bed north west uh, north south on in this cabin so that we could bring the kitchen forward uh, over the top of that bed somewhat to just give us more walking space between the kitchen and the cabinetry on the port side you know a lot of boats have the bed go east west in that situation yeah. but we and it was uh, about our space we wanted in the living areas and the, the living areas and the kitchen areas where everybody's going to be we thought you know any guest would be happy to sleep in that and come on board it's still a very roomy cabin it's a queen size bed lots of storage and drawers under the bed and then they got a beautiful full-size ensuite in front of that so we don't think we've sacrificed anything at all by turning the bed that way yeah and optimizing your living space upstairs obviously as you said that's the uh, pros and cons or the, the compromises through this journey so um but yeah very nice separate shower toilet vanity so very you know pretty spacious uh, bathroom in its own right probably larger than most on most boats to be honest so then we uh we'll go back over and have a look at the port side real quick I'll take us up through there got nice detail here the lighting timber trim so just going through the port side here we just uh, had a look through the uh the guests third bathroom and again, another um, queen size bed there. And we'll go back up and have a look at the the master stateroom, which is quite generous. And again, this is more around you, know, you as a cruising couple living on the boat and with guests occasionally. I, I take it coming on board rather than being on board all the time. That's right. So we, you know, we've got the two guest cabins, and we've also arrange the flybridge, which we'll see later, where we could have overflow guests staying. But you know. It, that will be a rare event and probably when we're somewhere where family come on board for a little while most of the time it's about us and uh, you know this this cabin here it is complete luxury mm. uh, full walk around huge bed we fitted a little office into there because we still got all our normal stuff to do and then yes yeah, you walk down to the starboard side and another magnificent roomy ensuite full walk-in shower separate that is a glass door now and huge big shower area with a seat which you know if you've showered underway you realize it's good to have a seat to sit down on or something to grab the walls in case you yeah. wiggle around a bit separate toilet up front there big double vanity lots of storage everywhere they're yeah, very happy with how the how the master cabins come up yeah even the toilet's got a view <laughs> And these are fresh flushing toilets as well. Fresh water flushing, yeah. I think we have we got two thousand litres of fresh water on board. Big water maker. 
And then in the uh, cockpit, uh, or the flybridge, I should say, but a very generous closed-in flybridge on uh, on your boat. So you've extended the internals all the way to almost the full length of the flybridge. Yeah, again, this was all about, you know, living space and connectivity and, you know, what we wanted to do with the flybridge. And then that that led to having internal stairs. We wanted that for number of reasons. One was to get the stairs out of the rear cockpit, which took up our living space, put them in an area which didn't impede on the living space in the saloon at all. And then up the stairs to it enclosed, we wanted it enclosed again, because we know what the weather's like. And, you know, we can still open that right up or we can close it up. It's fully air conditioned um, and we're able to do that because we've got so much solar and we've got, you know, whiz bang air conditioning systems that'll run forever. The other thing we came up with, because we wanted access down to the front of the boat without having to go all the way down and through it around and back up the side. You know, that's a safety thing and it's just a, an ease of for anchoring and mooring because one of our other pet hates on our last boat and when there was always, you know, heated times was anchoring or mooring or it was quite difficult to um, get the anchor down and or pick up a mooring buoy or tie up to a dock. There's, there's only ever the two of us. They're big boats. So we came up with the idea of having Portuguese deck with access doors on the starboard and the port, a little protected walk around deck on either side and then down a set of stairs and straight onto the front of the boat. So, you know, what a great viewing area, walking area, um, when you have got guests on board or you're underway, and then straight down to the anchor. We have got bow thrusters and dock mate. Again, that's because there's two of us on board most of the time. We want to take all the stress and everything out of it. So we want to use that area. It is where you run the boat. So when you're cruising, underway you're sitting up there maggie's had a melanoma and we certainly don't want it anymore so we've spec that all the glass is uv protected tinted for for heat and air conditioned so that maggie can stay out of the sun and the uv rays whilst we're underway and or during the day comfortably we've got a day lounge right beside the helm which could be it's, it's almost a double bed. It's going to be built up to pretty much the, the height of the windows in there. So they'll have a beautiful view out. She can read a book or, or friends can um, sit there, relax and see what's going on out the front. Then we've got a huge big L-shaped uh, lounge with a, with a dining table in there that does fold up. So it can be coffee or lounge. Um, we've got a little bar that is, um, you know, a sink, a refridge, freezer, and book storage, uh, utensil storage. We've got a chart table in there for all our nav gear. And then excitingly for Margie, she's going to have a little gym set up in there that will fold away or be set up because she's, uh, she's big on doing her exercises and um, passages. You know, it's hard to move around much, but she'll be able to get up there on the treadmill or the, or the um, elliptical trainer or, or do her yoga. And this has got all that sort of room. It's all decked out with speakers and stereo and she can watch a movie while she's pedaling it out on a elliptical. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then the extension of the flybridge floor, we have, you know, we have lots of to toys as, as uh, full-time cruisers. So we have Hobie kayaks stand-up paddle boards, mountain bikes. So they'll all go up there, all those toys, possibly even a second tender, a smaller tender. We've got a davit crane up there so we can easily lift the kayak down onto the platform or drop it over the side or without dragging it up and busting your shoulders. It's a very exciting space. Yeah, it is. You've done well there to uh, really maximise the, the use of, of all that area, that footprint that it has. So uh, you've almost got a second apartment up there. So it yeah. uh, gives you a lot of extra living area. So, uh, no, re really exciting, Russ. I mean, um, the, the project's well and truly coming along now, isn't it? And uh, the build's underway. And hopefully uh, we'll see you on the water 
before too long um, and uh, really keen to follow the, the progress as, uh, as it comes to fruition. Yeah, well, we've gone from being sailing sunrise to cruising sunrise now, making a change at the moment. Yeah, certainly be having our um, lifestyle and our, our uh, future cruising up there on the net. I, 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 we are super excited about what we're going to do in the new boat. Mm. So, um, we are going to pick it up at the factory now in Thailand. In Thailand, yeah, which is a nice cruising destination in its own right. <laughs> yeah, well, yes, yeah, so we, we haven't been there, either of us, ever. So really looking forward to cruising around there. Um, and our next, after that, um, we're hatching a plan to make our way up to Japan via Vietnam and um, the Philippines. Wow. And from Japan, we're thinking on cruising to the Aleutian Islands and then down through the southeast of Alaska and the inside channel down to um, the US. So we've really got some adventure planned for this boat. So now we can't wait to follow it and uh, cruising sunrise. So we'll uh, we'll put that link in the uh, in the video notes and um, follow with great interest. So um, yeah, thanks thanks very much, Russ, for your time today. Going through all this, um, obviously there's uh, lots of work to be done still to uh, get on the water, but we, we're really excited to see it come together and um, and see where you go. So thank you. Thanks, Brent. <laughs>